I have an ambitious plan, but I can only pull it off with your help. This plan has three stages and one stretch goal. The first stage is to decide on a convention for how programming headers should be used on ESP8266 and ESP32 projects. The second stage is then to use that design in our own project so that if we design a board we can have the same programming headers it makes it much simpler. The third stage is to lobby IT to incorporate this header into future Sonoff models. This would be a huge benefit to anyone that uses Sonoff. It would make reflashing much easier. And the stretch goal is to get it documented as a convention by Espressif. Not necessarily a rule that people have to follow, obviously, but some kind of a best practice. A suggestion that if you're going to put a programming header on your project, this is a good format to use because it's going to work with other people's programmers as well. So the obvious question is, why not just put USB on everything? Well, in many projects you can do that, but it adds a bit of expense, it's fiddly, um, adds a bit of size on the board. Often you don't need it. If it's a project where you're just going to be loading firmware once, and then you might do over-the-air updates, putting USB on it is basically a waste. It's a good idea to do it if you can, but often it's a waste of time. Now the second thing is people will be saying, why not just put an FTDI header on it? It's a convention, it's on lots of projects, it's really common on Arduino projects. The reason we can't use that is that the requirements for putting an ESP8266 or 32 into bootloader mode are different. We need to be able to assert GPIO 0 and hold it asserted while resetting the processor. So what we need is a programming header that is going to expose ground, power, TX, RX, GPIO 0, and reset. Now my quest to solve this problem came about because I was working on a project where I wanted to put a simple header onto a board and not have to worry about adding the auto reset circuitry and everything else and pull it off onto a separate subboard. And then I saw the WESP32 project which does exactly that. It's got a 6 pin 0.1 inch pitch header and the USB interface is on a separate subboard. So what you can do is just buy one of the interfaces and then use it for however many WESP 32s that you have. You just plug it in, you can load your software onto it, unplug it, and then use it as normal. It saves space on the WESP 32 board, keeps the design simpler, reduces cost a little bit, and for projects that you're going to be assembling yourself, it can make it simpler as well, because messing around with QFN chips is, you know, it's possible as a hobbyist, but it's a pain. If you can build a project just using a module, like an ESP12 module, then it's a lot simpler than having to put down QFN chips yourself. Being able to externalize the programmer into a little reusable module could be a really big advantage. Now the programmer module for the WESP32 is a great idea and I really like the concept, but there was one design decision with it that made me not just immediately jump into using it. The ESP32 and 8266 use 3.3 volt logic and the processor needs to be run at 3.3 volts and the programmer for the WESP32 provides 5 volts on VCC. That's fine if you've got an onboard regulator that will accept 5 volts in but if you just want to feed the, um, the VCC line directly the programming header really needs to have 3.3 volts not 5 volts. Now with that particular programming adapter the IO lines are at 3.3 volts so that's all good. But I thought what I would really like is an adapter that is like the WESP32 programmer but provides 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts. And so I laid out a board to do exactly that. Now when I was trying to think of a name for this I thought I'll just call it ESProg because it's like the ESP programming adapter. Then I went searching for the name and I discovered this board. Now this is a really interesting idea as well. It's the same basic concept but it uses 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts for the supply line. But there is a catch. The order of the pins is different. You can see that the, uh, the pins are in a different location compared to the WESP32 programmer. And then there is Mike Rankin's ESP32 programmer project, which I quite like because it uses a 2x3 programming header. It's much more space efficient on the target board. But bafflingly, it doesn't bring any power to the target. It runs on 3.3 volts itself and it exposes it on a test point, but it assumes the target board will be powered from some other source. So I revised my design and I made a new programmer that matched the ESProg header. 
I then incorporated this header into a few projects. I think I've got about five or six boards now, including a couple of uh, boards for commercial clients that use this header. But I'm not satisfied with it. There was a recent Twitter discussion that really made me rethink this whole thing. And there is also the issue of devices like the Sonoff and the programming header that it includes. Now look at the pinout on the WESP32 programming header and compare it to the programming header on the Sonoff. Now, as you can see, the pins that are present on the same on both of them match up. I want to convince ITED to add those two extra pins to the Sonoff programming header. I want them to add GPIO0 and reset so that we can make programming adapters that make it so easy to reflash a Sonoff that we just plug in one connector, press a button, and it reflashes. Now, the only way we have any chance of pulling this off is if we leave the existing pins as they are on the Sonoff and simply extend it, add two more pins. I think that's a far more achievable goal than trying to convince IT to totally reformat the header. Now this leaves me with a dilemma. Do I go with the WESP32 programming header format? Do we go for some variation based on the ESPROG format? Do we use 0.1 inch pitch headers in a single line? Do we go for a 2x3 format? Perhaps what we could use is a 2mm pitch 2x3 header. That would give a very small footprint on the board, and it also allows you to do clever things like use the edge of a PCB for the programmer to make right angle headers. But then the problem with that is that it's very unlikely that IT would switch the Sonoff to using a 2mm 2x3 header. They already have the 1x4 header with 0.1 inch pitch, and we can possibly convince them to add the two extra pins on the end but getting them to change the format entirely could be a big ask. So I don't really have a solution to this. I've got all of these engineering trade-offs buzzing around in my head. Do we go for a compatibility with the Sonoff or do we go for something more optimized like two millimeter two by three header? Do we feed in five volts, which is quite useful, but that relies on having a 3.3 volt voltage regulator on the board that can accept five volts. I don't know. I keep thinking the pros and cons of all of these different options and I can't really come to a decision. And that's when I realized there are lots of other people that probably have strong opinions about this as well. I'd really like to hear from other people how they think this should be done. So what I suggest is that you jump on either the Superhouse forum or the Superhouse Discord server and come along and talk about it. What do you think you would like to see as a standardized programming header for your ESP32 and ESP8266 projects. If we're going to come up with something that is going to be used across many, many projects and become a bit of a de facto standard, what should it look like? Let's try to figure it out together and uh, pitch to get this used by as many people as possible. So thanks. Check out the links below and come along and have a chat. I'd love to hear your opinion.